Well, good afternoon. Welcome back to North Star Oasis. I'm your host, Jeff Williams. We're here for another action-packed episode, just as we have every single week that you uh, watch this show. Uh, just a reminder that we've got all of our archives and sometimes some new content up on our uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash North Star Oasis. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of folks from uh, the Stillwater Area School District who were talking about having public meetings over the closure of some elementary schools. Uh, we had one of our cameramen was over there, and we put those videos up on YouTube uh, on our channel. And then we've also got some other great content, including some stuff that we had shot ourselves this past week. And... Um, as 2016 has been noted for, and I got to look up one thing here real quick. Um, we found out that um, one of the 12 astronauts who had been who had set foot on the moon, one of the 12 moonwalkers, passed away this week. Now, 2016 has already been noted for a year of uh, major celebrity deaths, uh, David Bowie and uh, a bunch of others, uh, mainly in the uh, TV, uh, film, and music industry, but we lost Edgar Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell was 85 years old. He uh, passed away on Thursday. He was on uh, Apollo 14, I believe. Yep. And the Apollo 14 mission took off on January 31st, 1971 and ended on February 9th, 1971. And uh, I'm just looking up the information now. And... They made 34 orbits, landed at Fra Mauer, and they went to the moon and back. And now we only have seven moonwalkers left, uh, but these guys are all up in their 80s and 90s. Uh, we're losing that generation, folks. And since the Apollo missions were scrubbed in uh, 1972, we haven't, ha we haven't gone back to the moon. We've sent probes there. Uh, the Russians continued sending probes there, but we, uh, we, you know, we just pretty much gave up and did everything in near-Earth orbit, and we haven't been back. So as it stands, only 12 people uh, uh, who were alive at any one time had st set foot on the moon, and five of them are now gone, and we want to just take a moment to remember Edgar Mitchell from Apollo 14. And since uh, we're on the subject of deaths, um, there is another, um, oh, my producer just said, have we lost the national ambition? Uh, yes, we've lost that national ambition to go to the moon a long time ago, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to come back anytime soon. But I'm going to change the subject here to another um, kind of celebrity death uh, that happened actually uh, this morning or, or, or late last night. I'm not exactly sure if it was on Friday or uh, Friday night or Saturday morning, but sometime in the overnight hours we lost George Koskimaki. I'm just saying, George Koskimaki, have I heard that name before? Well, if you read Hell's Highway, he was the author. If you've read the... Um, I believe it's the Battling Bastards of Bastone. You've heard of him. He wrote that book, too. He, uh, if you remember the Band of Brothers HBO TV series uh, that featured Company E of the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, the guy who really put the 506 on the map for his books was George Koskimaki. And he passed away, I believe he was age 93, uh, overnight. Um, he grew up in Upper Michigan. I grew up in Upper Michigan. We were not too far from each other. Our paths continually crossed, except they never intersected. I never had a chance to meet the uh, late George Koskimaki. But I am going to show you briefly uh, a little bit of video of an interview that he did a couple of years ago in uh, back in uh, Belgium when he was walking the battlefield and talking with some Belgian reporters. And we are actually going to uh, put the rest of that. We just don't have time to show the whole thing today. Uh, it is actually a video that I put together uh, early this morning uh, in tribute to George Koskimaki, who passed away yesterday at age 93. Um, he was with the 
506 Parachute Infantry Regiment Signal Company. So he was not with Easy Company, he was with the Signal Company of the 101st Airborne Division in World War II. And he's the author of a couple of really well-known books that put the uh, 101st on the map. And we, the, the whole video is just under eight minutes. And we're going to put that on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Oasis. And for a couple of people, it sure felt like Christmas on uh, this past Monday. On February 1st, even though there's only 322 day shopping days left until Christmas, for Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders, it sure felt like Christmas. Uh, as both of them really had surpassed expectations in the Iowa caucuses. And North Star Oasis was there to cover it. Uh, we, um, we had a small cruise, two of us, uh, me and uh, Sean Weish. Uh, we went down to uh, Mason City, Iowa. We visited with the Bernie Sanders volunteer uh, crew. And then from there we went over to Des Moines and we were at Ted Cruz's event uh, for that evening. And so we're going to show you uh, what it was, a, a look as to what it was like at the Democrat uh, caucus because you're, you're going to see a little bit more inside scoop as to how that operates compared to what you're going to see on most uh, channels. So here we go. Here's the Democrats on Monday, February 1st.
If you want to go to the national convention, you have to be a delegate to the county convention, to the district convention, to the state convention, and then get elected to go on to the national. So the only way you can do that is if you are participating at each level. But it's a fantastic opportunity to see our democratic process in action and go to Philadelphia at the end of it to see who gets the eventual nomination. My assistant is here. Cindy and I are co-chairs for the Hillary campaign. My name is Liz Buck. I live on Polk Boulevard. Um, I um, got committed to Hillary um, about a year ago when she first ran. I don't think I've ever known a candidate that is more qualified and more experienced that can take the job on the day she's elected. The other reason why I really got drawn to her is we have too many people in this state and in this country who are working hard and are not succeeding and are not financially self-sufficient. And I believe in what she said about that and I believe in what she's, her platform on those issues. I also was attracted to her this summer when she started talking about Alzheimer's research and the funds that she thought should be important that we put into that research. My family has been greatly touched by Alzheimer's, so I'm really interested in the work she's leading. Cindy, do you have anything else you want to add? I've been supporting Hillary, Hillary because she has uh, the most experience and the most qualified on both sides of the aisle. She takes this very seriously. She supported women and children her entire life. And as a mother of three daughters, it's high time we elect a female president. <laughs> we carry on as we are, or do we fight for fairness? We fight for fairness! <laughs> Bernie asks for fight for a progressive economic agenda that creates jobs, raises wages, protects the environment, and provides health care for all. This is the most important question of our time, and how we answer this will determine the future of our country. Uh, friends and neighbors, I thank you for coming tonight and supporting Bernie Sanders. I really do think he is the leader of our time. I think he is the only person who cares about us, about the working class, about the average everyday guy. So thank you for supporting Bernie Sanders. Thank you, everyone. Brattleboro Avenue here in Des Moines and I am here to support Bernie Sanders because when I when I boil it down it's uh, Hillary Clinton is fighting to preserve what we have and Bernie Sanders is fighting for our future. Yeah. I graduated from Iowa State University I have over thirty thousand dollars in debt and the only presidential candidate who has a clear solution on how our next generation of people aren't going to start their adult life out in the hole is Bernie Sanders. Woo. Bernie Sanders is the guy that's going to make sure we can all go to the hospital and not have to worry if we can pay the bill. Bernie Sanders is the guy that is fighting for us, and it's not just about him. He is clear that it is about all of us in this room. He is clear that it is about grassroots organizations like Iowa CCI Action Fund, who's been in this community for over 40 years fighting for justice. That is, if people say he's not electable and he can't accomplish what he wants, we need to remember that he, we are part of a grassroots movement. We have organizations here in Des Moines that have been fighting for this and will fight for this, and we will win if we elect Bernie Sanders. <laughs> All right, so at this point, would all of the Hillary, listen, would all of the Hillary supporters come to this side of the room? And Elizabeth, would you be in charge of counting your supporters? Will all of the Sanders supporters come to this side of the room? And Carol, will you be in charge of counting your supporters? And Rick? Will you get your O'Malley folks together in that corner and count them off and give me your total? Is there an uncommitted group? Is there an uncommitted group? If the uncommitted group would go into the back corner, go into the back corner if you're uncommitted. Back corner. 47, 48, 49, 50, 50. All, all of the undecided, undecided, undecided. And all O'Malley realigned. Realigned. And now commencing recounts for Clinton and Sanders. Yeah. Anybody else? We're at 232. 
motion to the body to be heard, I, I just would be happy to, be to hear that. Yes. I know. They said they found that there are three people that left. So if you want to if you want to challenge those results and do another count. The vote, so you guys know what the vote was. But the numbers so do add up. Yeah. The numbers yeah. do yeah. add up, too. Um, yes. the and they counted 224. Our total, the first round was 459. Right so on the, the money. Three, right on the money. So three, if three people walked out, we're still right on the money. But here's the thing. With if, our if count at 232 only, and 226. But if they only... Just, just, just a second. Let you don't have an opportunity. I will I will announce I, the total, and then you can challenge it. Yeah, we we, we just want to say, like, if they only count the people who joined their group, they're not getting a full count of the 10 people who potentially left. People could have left. People, people could have left. So and so we're saying they need count. to actually so count every accurate. individual body, not just... Every individual body. But we have a... I'm telling you how that works. If you want to challenge it, then challenge it. You have to wait until... Should I announced the vote. Yeah. Both sides. We, like you guys. All right. There's no reason. There's no reason to question. Right. Because if you only count the people you added, then it's going to be here's, here's where we now stand. Hold on. Here's where we now stand. Uncommitted, zero. O'Malley, zero. Clinton, 232. Sanders, 224. For a total of, hold on, hold on. 456. We lost three people in the melee, apparently. So, I understand there may be some, some consternation about the count. If anybody wishes to challenge that for a recount. Recount, I would like to challenge Is there a second? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there a second? There is a second. We will have a majority vote, and we will see how that plays out. So, the vote is, if you vote yes, if you vote yes, you want a recount. If you vote no, you don't want a recount. Does that make sense? Everybody understand what we're voting for? By the way, just so you know, the difference here will not change the delegate math. There are only nine delegates. I do not believe it will change the delegate math. But, that being said, I could be wrong. So, all in favor of a full recount, raise your hand. All against a full recount, raise your hand. The nays appear to have it. Unfortunately, the reporting app is not working appropriately, so I have to do it by hand. So it would be 232, 459, I've got 4.392. Do you change your number to 256? No, you do not change the number to 456. You stick with the, you stick with the original number. So, okay, so I have 232. So we're, we're doing the result part by round. That's the original number. That's what we use. It does not change. Information. The way the caucus math works out, when you do the formula, you take the total number of votes for each preference group times nine, which is the number of delegates we're electing, divided by the original count of 459 participants. That gets, on Sanders, 4.39. 
With the 232 for Clinton, doing the math, you get 4.55. The rules then say for anything above 0.5, you round up. For below 0.5, you round down. Hence, four delegates for Sanders, five delegates for Clinton. In conclusion, there is no conclusion. This fight continues. But look, we fought very, very hard to, in order to give the people a choice. And the people have made their choice tonight. And uh, it was hard to get over that threshold here. And uh, I know that those numbers don't reflect all of the hard work that you did. Uh, but uh, we have driven this debate. And... Uh, and so tonight, I, I have to tell you that I am suspending this presidential bid, but I am not ending this fight because the fight that you are and I are engaged in is a tough fight. And I believe that the toughness of the fight is the way the hidden God has of telling us we're actually fighting for something worth saving. Our country's worth saving, the American dream is worth saving, and this planet is worth saving.
night, an unbelievable night. What a great campaign. This has been an incredible honor to campaign across Iowa with so many of you to make the case for the kind of future we want for the Democratic Party and for the United States of America. There is so much at stake in this election. I don't need to tell you, every single one of you who came out for me, who worked so many hours from my young organizers with energy and passion, to the families and friends across this state. I am deeply grateful. We love you, Well, I, I love all of you. But here's what I want you to know. It is rare, it is rare that we have the opportunity we do now to have a real contest of ideas, to really think hard about what the Democratic Party stands for, and what we want the future of our country to look like if we do our part to build it. I am a progressive who gets things done for people. Okay, well, we weren't ready to quite show you that uh, next video yet, but that was a uh, indication of uh, what had happened on Monday with the Democrats. And yes, here is a Bernie Sanders uh, literature piece, Caucus for Bernie on Monday. Uh, this happens to belong in Mason South and Bath Townships at the Muse Norris, Muse Norris Conference Center, 500 College Drive in Mason City, Iowa. On the back it says, the revolution starts here. You do not have to be registered to vote in advance. You can register at the caucus. ID is not required to register. You must register as a Democrat to caucus for Bernie. If needed, you can change your party at the caucus. You can caucus by at age 17 as long as you'll be 18 by election day. So this is Bernie Sanders' campaign piece. They uh, were kind enough, kind enough to give us that at the headquarters. And I do want to say a special thank you to the Bernie Sanders uh, Mason City office for giving us the courtesy of being able to shoot the footage that you've seen in their office. Uh, we really do appreciate that. But I want to make a couple of quick observations about the process. First of all, uh, even though you may not have seen it on th uh, this video that we put together, on the full C-SPAN video, the full two and a half hours of that particular uh, caucus location, you know, the way they do things down there is way different than here, or at least I believe it's different than here. For them, it's about, the, on the Democrat side, it's about the delegate count. So you show up, you vote, but then you have an opportunity of uh, realignment, which essentially is convincing uh, lesser candidates to support your side. In this case, Martin O'Malley supporters are undecided to make a decision for one of the two main candidates. But the way they're supposed to do that by the party rules is that you do a formal recount of everybody. And if you actually watch the full video, which I have, uh, you would notice that the Hillary Clinton people only counted new people coming in, but they didn't count people going out. They did not do a full hand count. And it was identified that there were three people who had left. So that's how you had the 459 versus the 456 number. But the Sanders campaign, they did it by the book. They went through and hand counted every single person the way they were supposed to do it. So did Hillary Clinton really come up with that number of, was it 232? Or did some people leave and we're still in the count? That's just the way they run the process. Nobody really knows. There are some people who are alleging that it's Hillary Clinton's campaign that are stealing this, and that should have been Sanders. I don't know. But I think probably a little more transparent process might help, like actually having people write down their choice on a ballot. But that's just the way they do things down there, I suppose. I also want to make uh, two other quick observations, and we're going to move on. One... Bernie Sanders, go back to April, here on North Star Oasis, I said, 
Bernie Sanders is going to be a force to reckon with. Watch Bernie Sanders. Keep an eye on Bernie Sanders. People, both Democrats and Republicans, laughed at me. Ha, huh, Bernie Sanders, he's not going to get anywhere. Huh, really? Look what I said last month, our first show of the 2016 year. And what did we say? We said for Bernie to cut this 13-point deficit, he's got to get, within two weeks, cut it to the mid-single digits and then ride the momentum and work hard and he might be able to pull it off. And my producer, by the way, didn't laugh. He just cringed in acknowledgement. Yes, that is true. He, uh, but, um, you know, we, we called that one. And then lastly with Sanders, and this is the negative on Sanders, we stopped in their office. We were there for about an hour. They were great to help us out uh, with, with the footage. However, I've been involved in politics for 30 years. I can't believe it, 30 years already. I've been in many, many, many campaign offices. I have, you know, from all different races, from president down to school board. The one thing that you have to do to close things out is you need to make phone calls all the way up until it is no longer feasible to get people to the polling location, or in this case, the caucus location. Caucus location. And what I saw in that Mason City office was the fact that people were really not engaged in making the phone calls necessary to win. They got to that threshold, and then they started looking at the victory parties. And as I heard some of the chit-chat, oh, I can't wait till tonight. But they still really needed to focus in on closing the deal. And the way things work with delegate counts and all of that, with the amount of phone calls that they could have placed in that one hour we were there, that might have flipped a delegate or two. And that could have been the whole difference in the margin of error. Uh, I have to say that Bernie Sanders did what I thought he was going to do to get to that point. Unfortunately, it was just the uh, rookie mistakes from young campaigners that made the difference between winning and losing. Still, look at New Hampshire coming up on Tuesday. Bernie Sanders is definitely a force to reckon with in this race. Now we're going to move on to the Republican side. Uh, like I say, we were, we were there trying to cover both sides with only two of us. We never really had a chance to venture out. We pretty much had to pick one Democrat and pick one Republican. No uh, disrespect meant for any of the other candidates in the race. You're all fine people. You're all fine candidates, and you all work hard for your candidates if you support them. Uh, but when you have limited time, limited uh, staff, you, you just got to, you got to pick your poison. And so we picked Sanders on the Democrat side, and we picked Ted Cruz on the Republican side. And here is our uh, video of Republicans in Iowa. The time has came. We can get started. Fifteen minutes late, but uh, look around the room. Uh, what a crowd. Great. Very great. I'd like to welcome every one of you here. I'm Gary Nystrom. I'm the chair of the Boone County Republican Central Committee and a member of the State Central Committee. I'm addressing you tonight on behalf of the Boone County Republican Party to welcome you and to review some basics before the official business of the caucus is conducted. Let's first begin with our Pledge of Allegiance. I 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thanks for the welcome. And, uh, well, this is a great big night for Iowa. Uh, we get to make a recommendation to the rest of the country on who we think should be the next president of the United States. And I can't say enough about you all being here and filling this gym tonight. I'm here speaking on behalf of Ted Cruz. And you'll know that I have not endorsed a presidential candidate in eight years. I said, it has to be a conviction. Well, it came to a conviction for me on November 13th. I announced November 16th, and I've been working with, and, uh, with the Cruz campaign ever since. Here are some things that come with a President Cruz. First, he is a full-spectrum, constitutional, Christian conservative. It's in his bones. And he was spoon-fed the Constitution and the Bible at the kitchen table. I know a little bit about what that is like. It goes into you and it stays, and your convictions will allow you to face about, down about anything if it goes deep in your bones. Here's what you get with Ted Cruz. He has been a fighter that has fought for each of these things in a public arena. He's defended innocent, unborn human life. He's done so before the United States Supreme Court, and he did so with a partial birth abortion case successfully. He has also defended marriage before the court between a man and a woman, and he believes it, he's been active, he's been a fighter. He's also defended religious liberty in a number of ways as well, before the courts, as well as the Second Amendment. You know the Heller decision, the first time we really won anything for our gun rights, it was Ted Cruz that put that case together that protected at least the right to keep and bear arms to a degree in the Heller case. And then along the way, I put a lot of my effort into uh, battling Obamacare. I want Obamacare ripped out by the roots. Ted Cruz has fought it as hard as anybody in the United States Senate. He will do that and push the Congress to repeal it word for word. He's taken on the Washington cartels. He has fought amnesty every step of the way. And his immigration policy has signed off on by Jeff Sessions and Steve King. And Ted Cruz has signed that policy as well. King. My name is Ashley Rungi. I hope you will join me in supporting Senator Marco Rubio tonight. I'm voting for Marco because I believe he not only will unite our party, but has the greatest chance of beating Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders in November. Marco believes in American exceptionalism, and as president, he will reverse Obama's disastrous policies, including Obamacare. He is committed to defeating ISIS and securing our borders. I've heard Marco speak. I'm convinced that his faith in Christ has been a great influence in his life. As president, Marco's Christian values will guide him in making the best decisions for our country. 2016 is a pivotal point in the direction of the United States. I want a president who believes in America, who will uphold our constitution, and who will unite our country. Please join me in caucusing for Marco Rubio tonight. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. My name is Denny Hammond, and I'm representing, representing uh, Donald Trump for president. There's a lot of things that I have that uh, support for Donald, and I'm going to give you a few of them. But first of all, folks, Washington is broke. We've got to fix what's going on out there. We've had, they've had their chance, Congress, to do things and it doesn't seem to get done. Donald is a doer. He will get it done. And a few things that I think to point out to show that he's gonna do such things may follow. First of all, Don's tax plan. He'll lower the taxes in the middle class. He will take his business experience and uniquely qualified to grow the economy. He's dealt with the world leaders throughout his business career and most importantly, he knows how to negotiate. Also, Mr. Trump understands the illegal immigration program and problem that we have. We have to build that wall. There isn't a candidate out there that doesn't agree with that. He will get that done. He will make Mexico pay for it. He also has to take care of the Syrian problem. 
We have got to stop this illegal immigration coming into this country. The insurgents needs to be done that way before they get into the country, not after. It makes a lot simpler way to stop it before it begins. Number three, Mr. Trump, as you remember, is a self-funding campaign. He's not taking money from any wealthy or special interest groups. He's not doing this for the money, folks. And he won't have to owe any favors to anybody in Washington for any paybacks. And that, to me, is very key. He's free to make decisions on his own and that are in the best interest of America. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to the temporary chairs and secretaries of the six precincts. Thanks again, folks. At this time, you can take out your ballots, vote for your candidate, and when you get finished, pass them down to the end of the row. You can, you don't have to. Yes. Anybody need pencil? Either way. Well, I can take them here if you know. Just set them here. Oh, yeah. Just, is that okay? Yep. Yep. As long as we get a hold of them. Yep. I can leave it here? Leave it here. Yes. Thank you. Make sure they get it, Okay. Okay. Would you take this? These are some of the ballots. They're supposed to pass them down. So I need to collect the ballots? Need to collect the ballots.
Yeah, I was waiting signs today for crews. I was um, trying to get as many people as I know to uh, any of the side of voters on the street to vote for crews, and it looks like it's paying off. It looks like he's doing well tonight. He's a principal conservative. You know, he made a promise to Texas that he's going to go to DC to represent Texas and not the people of DC, and that's exactly what he did. It was really, really an experience, and all my friends are like, don't feel bad because you know Trump's gonna win this. And I'm like, I'm doing what I gotta do. And they're all congratulating me. So I, I didn't see what's going on yet with the results, but it looks like it must be good. Yeah. On Christmas Day, I uh, spent the day, I had already celebrated the holiday, so I spent Christmas Day looking at his website and looking at all his policy positions and they lined up exactly with what I believe in. So uh, I knew that day that he was my guy. I did do uh, some phone calling at the headquarters here in Des Moines. Um, the caucus uh, in West Des Moines was, uh, Ted didn't do as well as I think he does in the rural areas. Uh, my area in West Des Moines is really not very conservative and Trump won that one. Um, but luckily, Cruz won the state, so I'm really happy and excited. And um, you know, he's proven himself, and I think that's why he won. This was my first time to get involved before the primary season. I usually, um, I had never done this before. I had never campaigned for someone before, so this was new to me to be involved uh, before the caucus. I usually would go to the caucus and decide that night, right then and there. And uh, so this was first for me to. Uh, just make a decision a month ahead of time and, and campaign for someone. So but, I, but, I, but I believe, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I believe in him. Ted Cruz has won the Republican caucuses. Donald Trump second. Marco Rubio third. Positioning himself as the establishment alternative. Everyone else way behind. Mike Huckabee is dropping out. <laughs> Tonight here in Iowa, the people of this great state event sent a very clear message. After seven years of Barack Obama, we are not waiting any longer to take our country back. This is a time where we need a president that will truly preserve and protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, not one that undermines, attacks, and ignores the Constitution of the United States. If Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton get elected, If they were to win, we will be a great nation in decline. Well, I have to start by saying I absolutely love the people of Iowa. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So on June 16th, when we started this journey, there were 17 candidates. I was told by everybody, do not go to Iowa. You could never finish even in the top 10. And I said, but I have friends in Iowa. I know a lot of people in Iowa. I think they'll really like me. Let's give it a shot. They said, don't do it. I said, I have to do it. And we finished second. And I want to tell you something. I'm just honored. I'm really honored. And I want to congratulate Ted. And I want to congratulate all of the incredible candidates, including Mike Huckabee, who's become a really good friend of mine. So congratulations to everybody.
the great state of Iowa. Let me first of all say, to God be the glory. Tonight is a victory for the grassroots. Tonight is a victory for courageous conservatives across Iowa and all across this great nation. Tonight, the state of Iowa has spoken. Iowa has sent notice that the Republican nominee and the next president of the United States will not be chosen by the media. If the American people stand together and say, we want our country back. There is no force in Washington that can stand against the American people, that can stand against the grassroots, that can stand against our unity. We are going to do this together as a movement from the people. And I tell you tonight, Iowa has made clear to America and the world, morning is coming. Morning is coming. And that was the view from the Republican Iowa caucus on Monday, November 1st. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to the uh, Ted Cruz campaign for allowing us to be there as uh, working press members. And also to A.J. Rabinowitz and Kathy Bloom for the fine interviews that they were able to uh, lend us for a moment. Uh, breaking news. This is breaking as of five hours ago on the Des Moines uh, Register.com. Uh, actually, there are some uh, interesting things regarding the Democrat side. Iowa Democrats reviewing some caucus precinct results. So that whole delegate uh, thing is going to change. Right now, Hillary Clinton has been allotted 29 delegates and Bernie Sanders 21 in uh, Iowa from their performances. And then on the Republican side, we have Ted Cruz with eight delegates. Donald Trump, seven, Marco Rubio, seven, Ben Carson, three, Jeb Bush, one, Carly Fiorino, one, John Kasich, one, Rand Paul, one. And 1,237 delegates are needed for the Republican nomination, and 2,382 delegates are needed for the Democrat nomination, since the presidential inauguration is coming up in 49 more weeks. But Iowa also usually signifies the clearing of the field, and Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, and Rand Paul have all suspended their campaigns on the Republican side, and Democrat Martin O'Malley has also uh, done the same. So those four candidates have dropped out. Uh, since we uh, do this live on Saturdays, tonight is a Republican primary night, and Carly Fiorina is the only person not going to be on the stage. Uh, she apparently doesn't have enough poll polling, although she claims otherwise. Uh, at this point in time, I think they should all be up there. I mean, you've only got eight people left. 
you know, we've had stages of eight, but now the powers that be said, uh, uh, Carly Fiorina, you're staying home, and the other seven are going on. But uh, New Hampshire is going to be voting on Tuesday, so we'll uh, see what happens when uh, the next round of voting begins. So that's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.